Hey, this is Josh with PDS Equipment, and I'm going to be talking about using InDesign's data merge function uh, to create different variants of the same job. So basically, right now I have a template for a wedding invitation. We want to take this and turn it into this, a multi-page PDF with a bunch of different names in place of that placeholder name that I had in the initial file. Okay, so the way you can obviously do this is just create a multiple page PDF of this and just individually type out each of the names. Um, but we're going to talk about a way to do that a little quicker to save time. So if we start with our template here, the only other thing we need is an Excel file. And in this Excel file, we're going to have the name of our variable, which is guest or name or whatever you want to call it. And then every column below that, or sorry, every row below that within that column will be placed within the multiple page PDF once we create it in InDesign. If you want multiple variables, just name columns, whatever you want those variables to be called, and fill out the document however you want. When you have it set up how you want, make sure to save it as a CSV file. Okay. So we have our variable data in that Excel sheet, and we have our template here in Illustrator. Now the reason I create my template in Illustrator is just because this vector type of information is just easier to deal with in a graphics program rather than in InDesign. So the only thing I want to change is all of this, this text box, that has where my variable is going to be within it. So I'm going to go to my layers. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this text box and I'm going to drag it into a second layer and hide that layer. So now my template does not have what is going to become the variable data. This is just a blank template essentially. So you can pretty much choose to have however much information you want in your template and however much information you want to be in your actual InDesign file. So I'm going to save this as a PDF, that way it lines up right. I'm going to call it Wedding Invitation Template. Okay, so I have my template, and I have my CSV file with all the different names. So now I'm going to go into InDesign. So in InDesign, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to create a new document. If I go back and look at my template, I can see that the artboard size was 5 inches width and 7 inches height. So when I create a new document here, I'm just going to do the same thing, 5 inches wide, 7 inches tall. I'm going to create that document. Okay, now I will just go to File Place. I'm going to take that template. I'm going to line it up at the top right corner. If I look over here, yep, everything's lined up well. Now I'm just going to create a new text box. And in this text box, I'm just going to go back to that Illustrator file. I'm just going to copy all this information, but you can just type it if you want. And now I'm just going to design it and make it look good here. Once I like what this looks like, you can change it as much as you want. I know that this is the only piece of information that I want to be a variable. So now is when we're going to use that Excel file. So I'm going to click on this and go to Window Utilities Data Merge. And the first thing you do is you select the data source, which of course is going to be that Excel file. Now you see you have one variable. That was the first row of that column. It was called Guest. So where it says my name, I'm going to instead insert that variable. Now I click right here and I create a merge document. Now we want to create a multiple page PDF. So there's really not much that we need to change here. I'm just going to click OK. And now we can look at the file that was created. And yeah, that looks pretty good. It has a bunch of different names. Everything's lining up well. Now I'm just going to export it as a multi page PDF. Now if we look at that file we just created, it's all the same invitations 
except for a different name in place of that variable. So all we have to do now is import this file into raster link. And we're going to create a jig. That's the same size of what we just did, so five by seven. Let's add a little space between them. Now we're going to click on that file, put in jig print. And there we go. And this is what our final product looks like. I will shortly be making a part two to this video where we go a little bit more in depth. I'll talk about special colors, special plates for that job. And also talk about another type of job where we have multiple pieces of variable data, including variable images, which you'll see here, the different flags. And also talk about cut lines and how to put all of it onto a single page, which will be the better way to do it for UCJV. Thank you.